Hey everyone, thanks for coming to the 7 p.m. class. Um, got all my toys kind of dispersed here. Um, for those who haven't joined my class, my name is Julia and thanks so much for participating in the slow flow tonight. So with all the toys that we just used in the last class, we're going to use it here today. And so what we're going to be needing for this class is we are going to go ahead and if you have two blocks or anything makeshift for your two blocks, please go ahead and grab those and place them towards the front of the mat here. Definitely would recommend having a blanket. And if you have um, any sort of bolster or possibly um, a pillow, I got my big guy over here, you are more than welcome to accompany that into your practice. So for a lot of our class today, it's going to be um, in the majority uh, be using the wall space behind us. So um, at this time, if you already set your mat up, um, if you could, just kind of bring it near any open wall space. And um, so that, you know, we can use it for our practice. So I'm just gonna t give another minute or two so that you can go ahead and grab your props. Thank you go ahead and start some music as well. So, um, this week, if you have attended my classes, you have seen a pattern where we dedicated our time and space so that we can open up more space and uh, creating strength and conditioning for our spine. And so the theme is going to follow. Um, going through more of a slow flow, um, the classes throughout this week were um, more on the strengthening component, uh, strengthening our front core and our back core so that we can keep our spines healthy and strong and to get us excited to go back out up on the rocks once things start to reopen. And we're also going to kind of see some of that similarity in through our ankles as well. So we need a healthy feet, a healthy back, and as well incorporating some hip movement and upper body movement so that we can have the best climbing experience. Okay. So with the beginning of class today, I actually would like for us to start in a downward facing dog. And in our downward facing dog, we are gonna go ahead and make our heels and our booty more towards the wall and we're gonna come into a wide legged downward facing dog. So um, if, um, let me see. So without the booty touching, we're just having it close to the wall. We're having our heels being connected and just bringing them wider than hip length apart. Bringing our hands forwards here and then inhale, guiding the chest towards the ground and the tailbone up towards the sky. You know, for some of us, um, you know, traditionally start a grounding pose in a standing pose. But today, in our slow flow, I would like for you to find a sensation of calming with your breath as we start in a standing pose. Because technically, even though downward facing dog is an inversion, it is also a standing inversion. So you can play around here with your hips up towards the sky. 
glutes and quads engaged, hinging at the hips, bring your tailbone up, chest towards the ground, pressing your hands into the ground. And you can kind of play along with the width of your hips, of your legs, maybe getting some hip sway side to side. For five more breaths. Hollowing out through the lower spine. Good. Final breath, inhale through the nose, out through the mouth. Coming forward, dropping the knees down. Coming into a child's pose. And flipping your palms up with your arms forward. And then we just have to deepen through your breath, bringing your tailbone towards the back of the wall and your crown towards the front of the room. And from here, allowing yourself in each breath, feeling as if you're melting even more towards the ground. Speaking of the word energy today and the principles, the different adjectives and the different definitions that energy has along with its word whether it be energy, energetic, energized. And just allowing each breath and each movement and each analytical thought as we process our asanas and process our alignments and utilizing that energy as a tool to get us deeper into our practice, whether it be mentally or physically. Setting an attention for your practice today, allowing yourself to move slowly with grace and with your breath. We can start to flip at the palms here. You can either keep your knees together or you can spread them apart with the big toes to touch, whatever you would like, or your child's pose from here. Your palms are going to press into the ground and we're just going to walk ourselves over towards the right side of the room to get a lateral side bend. Maybe placing a left hand on top of the right. I'm starting to feel sensations into the left side body. Starting from the lower rib cage into the top. From your serratus interior. And maybe even at the top of your arm. Rooting your left shoulder a little more towards the ground. We're going to stay here for five more breaths. So with that, in each inhale, maybe finding more length to the spine, and maybe on the exhale, so you can get a little deeper to your practice, maybe even trying to go a little bit more towards the right side. Uh, with the final breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth, very gently walking your hands back into a neutral child's pose for two breaths.
And after those two breaths, you can then go ahead and navigate yourself over towards the left side of the room. Maybe placing the right hand on top of the left, rooting your right shoulder more towards the ground. And feeling the sensation into the right side body. Take five breaths here. With your final breath, inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. Then you could start to walk your body back into an original child's pose for two breaths. Good. And then slowly inhale, lift up through the chest and Little by little, walk your hands towards your knee. Good. Allowing yourself to find a straight spine here. Then the next breath, inhale. Guiding your chest up into your cow spine. And then exhale, chin the chest into your cat spine for two breaths. Good. And then inhale to your cow spine. And then exhale to your cat spine for two breaths. And then you're going to go ahead and find yourself back at the straight spine. And as we find ourselves here at the straight spine, since we're already on our knees, we're going to come up onto our shins and bring our hands forward and tabletop and bring in our feet to meet the wall. Good. And so as we uh, press our feet into the wall, we're going to hike our tailbone up here. And as our tailbone is up, we're going to bring our arms forward and come into an extended puppy pose. And so from here, we are encouraging our hips to stay aligned on top of our hips. Chest is towards the ground. And I'll go ahead and I'll go more at a side angle so that we can see. So our feet connecting to the wall, hips up, and then guiding the chest downward through our shoulders. Stomach towards her thighs. And if you would like, you do have your two blocks. If you wanted to open up more through the arms, you are more than welcome to do so. Five breaths. Then after the five breaths, inhale, rise, your chest up, coming into a tabletop position. And then making sure that the blanket is aligned so that your pelvic can go on top of it. Good. We're just going to go ahead and as our knees are down onto the ground, we are going to come forward into a supportive plank. Uh, and then um, actually we're going to walk just like a couple inches with our knees so that our toes can lay off the wall here. Uh, so as we come into this supportive plank nice and strong, we're going to engage the core and come forward, bend at the elbows all the way down to the ground. 
And um, for this next stretch, we're going to stretch into um, the lower thoracic spine as well as into the lumbar spine. Okay. So from here, we, we're going to go ahead and take our hands underneath our elbows like we would in Cobra and bring our shoulders back here. Actually, before we start the asana, let's do a cobra for three breaths just to open up here and get used to the sensation. So press the top of your feet into the ground, your hips to the ground, and inhale, rise into your cobra using the power of your front core and your back core more than your hands, leading your chest forward here, shoulders away from your ears, three breaths. Exhale, release. You go ahead and start to kind of bend at the knees here and bringing your tailbone up towards the ceiling. As we bring our tailbone up towards the ceiling, we want to keep active glutes and bringing the top glutes curving upward here. Good. The so shoulders are away from our ears. We're going to go ahead and inhale. Look up through the chest like we would in Cobra. Shoulders away from the ears. Good. Hips up, chest is up. Five breaths. And each inhale, allow your, your chest to make its way more. Make its way more towards the ceiling. Good, then exhale, release. Go ahead, place your hands underneath your head. Bend at the knees, point your toes up, and just kind of rock your feet side to side. Good, opening up through the shoulders, Let's go ahead, place your feet to the ground. Bring your right arm to the T, left hand to the side of your face. Inhale, roll onto the outer edge of your right thigh, right leg. Good. And so you can have your hips on top of the stack, or if you'd like, you can place the top foot behind the bottom knee. Five breaths. After the five breaths, straighten the legs and very gently roll onto your stomach. Good. And then assist your body more towards the right side. So when we extend our left arm, we're not crashing into the wall here. Good. So as we find this extension, straightening up the left arm, good. we can then place the right hand by your face and then roll onto the side here. Keeping the right hand to keep us stabilized. And if you would like to, the top leg can go behind the knee or it can stack. Either way, five breaths. After the fifth breath, you can slowly straighten the legs if they, the back, the top leg was bent, <laughs> and then come onto your stomach here. Good. And then for uh, aligning yourself back onto the mat, if you needed to adjust yourself, good. We're gonna go ahead and come into a sphinx pose here, bringing your pelvic in towards the blanket, top of the feet into the mat. Lifting up through the chest and curving it up towards the ceiling. Okay. 
We're gonna press the hands into the mat and bring them more towards the corner, coming into seal pose. So the pelvic area, the tailbone is kind of tucking in the pelvic in so we can lift up more to the chest. Five breaths. And then slowly release after the fifth breath. So we can guide our hands um, behind our back where our sacrum is. We're going to come into locust pose, rotating through the shoulders to straighten out through the arms so that we are, our chest is engaged and open, our shoulders are engaged. We are going to make a fist and then create a gun with our index finger pointed out as well as our thumbs here. And from here, first, we're going to press our feet into the mat and only lift up through the chest. And we're going to inhale, rise, guide the chest up towards the ceiling and bringing the gun back. Five breaths. Finding the lower core engagement and the front core engagement. We should see some rocking. That means we're breathing. Shoulders are away from the ears. Neck is elongated. And then slowly release the chest to the ground. Good. Take two breaths with your forehead onto the ground. We're going to go to a full locust pose for the next breath. So on the next breath, actively point your toes to the back of the room, gun towards the back of the room. Then inhale, rise, lift up through the feet and on through the hands for five breaths. And after the five breaths, you can slowly release the pose. Release the hands, palms facing down, pressed by your hips. Legs are pointed back. The first time we did the half locust, we lifted up through the upper body. So now we're gonna lift up through the lower body. So from the lower body, point your toes to the back of the room. And then inhale, rise, bringing your feet up towards the ceiling, engage the core, five breaths. Pressing your hands into the mat. Good, and then slowly release after the five breaths. Good job, everybody. And you can bend up the knees. Do a windshield wipe side to side. Good. And then we're going to go ahead and place your toes back to the ground. We're going to take the hands and or the forearms, I should say, and come into Sphinx pose just so that we can navigate ourselves into a forearm plank. So having our shoulders above our elbows here, our hands are going to be fanned and pressed into the ground. Good. Legs are long. Curl the toes. Engage the front core, the back core, the quads, the glutes, and inhale, rise into your plank pose for five breaths. And then after your forearm plank, as we release, we're just going to hike your hips up towards the sky, bringing our toes towards us into a dolphin plank, sending your chest towards our feet. Ten breaths this time. And you can walk your feet either forward or back, or create some width here to get deeper into your dolphin pose, your dolphin plank. 
for the next five breaths. Tailbones active towards the sky, quads are engaged, chest actively coming towards your feet. We should be at 10 breaths by now, so take one more breath, inhale through the nose, out the mouth. Gently drop the knees, come into child's pose, bring in the hands back towards our ankles. Feet are together here. And then from here, we're going to bring our hips up towards the ceiling. Good. And bringing our head towards the knees here. Stretching out through the spine and our neck should be soft. We're not pressing our head into the mat. Good. And sending the center of your spine towards the ceiling. Five breaths. Through the five breaths, curl through the toes, bring your feet together, and then slowly rake all your way into a kneel position. Good. And then let's navigate our way to the wall a little bit here. So we have our blanket. Go ahead and bring it to the side so that we can be nice and stable here, coming into your kneel position. And if it's more comfortable, um, you can take a prop underneath your sitting area here of keeping your spine stable. For our next asana, our focus is opening throughout our arm and throughout our chest here. And we're gonna, um, left side of your body is going to face the wall to start. So once your left body is facing towards the wall, go ahead and bend at the elbow and maybe create a little room here and slide your elbow towards the back. Good. And so we don't want the elbow necessarily to be in alignment with our shoulder, maybe a little higher so that it's in alignment with our eye gaze. And with our right fingertips, we're going to bring it down towards the ground here. And the goal of our fingertips down here is to help assist our upper body towards the front of the mat. Pressing your hand into the mat. So we should feel an opening, or the goal is to feel an opening in through the armpit the front of the chest, the pec here. Good, and then once you feel that sensation, getting our neck involved, you can then start to guide the right ear to right shoulder. Stay here for 10 breaths. And then once we've reached the tenth, the tenth breath, keep your arm on the wall with your right hand slowly lifted to your right cheek and inhale, assist, assist your cheek back into place and very slowly bring the elbow towards the front of the room and let your arm very slowly leave the wall. You kind of feel the blood rush going through your fingertips here. Uh, we don't want to rush this movement or else we won't get to enjoy the sensations that we feel. We don't want to put stress onto our body. So reconnect your hands to your knees. Very gently inhale up to the chest, eye gaze up, or a cow spine. 
And then exhale, tuck the tailbone around through the spine. Two breaths of chin to chest into a cat spine. And then very gently come back into that neutral spine. And then just flip sides here. So prop up if you need to, if you would like a seat. You're going to find that strong, straight spine. Meet the right arm to the wall. Bend at the elbow. Elbow is in alignment with your eye gaze and kind of send it towards the back. Having your left fingertips connect to the mat here, keeping your chest lifted. And we want our spine to be strong here, so we don't want to find any roundness. We want to lift up through the chest. Okay. And very gently start to square through, through, through the body. The goal necessarily isn't to twist with their spine or to use our left hand to twist. It's just a guide to keep our spine erect and to make sure that we have this opening with our chest. Do this for seven more breaths. So we probably went through three in that explanation. Once you reach the 10th breath, take one more, inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Good. And I forgot to uh, mention to bring the left ear to shoulder, but if you did, <laughs> bring your left cheek back into place. Good. And then just very gently remove the right hand off of the wall, and onto the thigh here. Take a couple breaths, enjoy the sensations of your right hand. After the couple breaths, inhale into your cow spine. And then exhale into your cat, chin to chest. Two breaths. And then you can very gently release, coming off of your block and bringing your blocks pull towards the side of the mat. Good. So we can go ahead and come up on our feet here. Good. And just rocking our hips side to side. Good. And bringing them more so that we get more into the hips more to the side body. And then I begin to walk your feet towards the wall. And this time we're gonna come into a wide-legged forward fold with um, our booty pressing into the wall. The back, if, if your legs can too as well, that's great. But um, most of us are blocked by our glutes. So we're gonna find the most comfortable wide-legged forward fold and then start to hip hinge here. So if you need to kind of guide yourself away from the wall to create that hinge, you can go ahead and do so. And with that straight spine coming down, you can then navigate your heels a little more towards the wall here. Coming into a forward fold, pressing your hands into the mat to keep your booty onto the wall, your glutes onto the wall, and to assist yourself into a deeper hip hinge, hugging at the knees and of the quads. 10 breaths. Tailbone active towards the ceiling, chest active towards the ground. And so if you need to use your blocks here in this hip hinge, you can go ahead and do so.
Good. And then after the tough breath, we're going to inhale, rise, halfway lift. Good. Then we're going to walk our feet very slowly to the center. Good. Coming into a Uttanasana, forward fold. With our legs together, heels to the wall. Having our blocks to help assist us deeper into our hip hinge, forward fold. Two more breaths. Good. And then inhale, halfway lift. Lift through the heels and start to bring your glutes on top of your heels and your spine to the wall. So this is gonna look similar um, of what we did on Tuesday where we were um, onto our toes and like coming into these spinal twists. But from here, we're, we're taking things slow tonight and so we're kind of having this support of our spine on the wall so that we can alleviate the pressure onto our ankles. But from here, we are able to kind of condition ourselves so that we're able to balance a little better without it. So the feet together, spine to the wall. You take your blocks, press the blocks into the wall, and then inhale, press your hands into the blocks uh, so that we could just straighten out through the spine. We're not trying to find a lift. We're just trying to straighten out through the spine more and connecting your shoulders to the wall, head to the wall, engage to the core. Strong thighs here. Three more breaths. And then to add a little bit of a challenge here, we're gonna grab onto the blocks and then bring the blocks outward a little more. Rotate our shoulders back into the girdle, keeping our head connected to the wall. And we're going to grab onto the blocks, but open up our palms to the sides and press our blocks into the wall here. Right. With uh, thumbs facing towards the front of the room, fingers onto the walls, opening up into this T-shape. Once you find that comfortable position, add five more breaths from here. And for an even more of a challenge, for the next five breaths, slowly start to guide the blocks up towards the wall. So our arms are up like we would in, ch in chair pose. As we grab onto the blocks, we're gonna press the blocks into the wall with our arms straight. Find that comfortable spot and then add five breaths. Shoulders are pressing into the wall, hands are pressing into the wall, glutes are pressing into the wall. How are we doing this? What the heck? Go ahead and challenge yourself. And after the five breaths, bring the arms out to the Y shape for five breaths. Pressing the blocks into the wall. Good. After the fifth breath, slowly release. Blocks to the floor. Good. And go ahead and come on to your knees here. And then walk your hands forward and point your toes up. Good. And then just go ahead and slowly rotate the ankles here. Maybe finding some hip sway side to side. Anything to kind of reset yourself from here. Good. And then from here, we're going to bring the blocks back in front of us, hands onto the blocks. 
Straighten up through the legs into that forward fold and spread your legs apart back to the wide-legged forward fold, guiding your legs or your glutes back to the wall, bringing the blocks forward, coming back to that hip hinge, bringing the chest down like you want a downward-facing dog. Five more breaths. And after the five breaths, we're going to slowly walk our blocks forward, coming to the halfway lift. Point the toes so that your right toe is towards the new front of the mat, and then your left toes follow walking your blocks to your right foot, squaring them, coming into a pyramid pose here. So we're finding this half lift. Good. Adjust the width of your legs accordingly to what feels good for you. Find a little bit of that squaring through the hips, externally rotating both hips outward. Good. And if you would like to come into a hip hinge, you're more than welcome to do so. Three more breaths. So the right block is pressed in between your right foot and the wall. And if it's not, go ahead and align yourself there. And from here, we're going to open up our left arm and press our left arm into the ceiling or into the wall here for Trikonasana, triangle pose. Five breaths. And after the five breaths, very gently start to bend at the right leg. Place the block in front of your right foot. Good. And then as we start to bring the right foot about two inches behind, go ahead and start to straighten out through the right leg and press the left heel into the wall, coming into Ardha Shantrasana, having the assistance of the wall to keep us balanced and being able for us to engage both the legs, feel light in the upper body, but so that we can expand and stretch out more into the inner thighs. By building that strength, three more breaths. Slight bend to the right leg, keep the left foot active and bring the left foot to the floor and coming into a side angle pose bring the right hand in between the right foot and the wall and pendulum swing your left arm to the front of the room for five breaths rooting through your left pinky toe that extending through the side body shoulders are pressed into the wall All right, so we're going to very gently release the grabbing off to the left block, pointing both the toes back to the front for a three breath, wide legged forward fold, extending the arms out straight. Tailbone pressing into the wall as well as going up into the air. Good. Then after you've had your three breaths, inhale, halfway lift. Point the toes where the left foot now is going to be the front of the mat, right foot to follow. And slowly walk your blocks, coming into that pyramid pose, pressing your left foot into the block, and the blocks pressed into the wall here. Good. And it's your destiny here to kind of edit your whip in between your feet here. So you can start by finding a, 
a halfway lift, externally rotate both of the hips, spiral them outward. Good. Almost like you're trying to close your butt cheeks in, you're going outward instead of inward to open them up. Good. And then once you feel comfortable, you can come into that forward fold. Good. So the hip isn't pressing into the wall here. It's just the block. On the next breath, find a halfway lift. And then keep the left hand onto the block and then inhale, rise. Bringing your right arm towards the ceiling, coming into Trikonasana. Full shoulders pressing into the wall here. Five breaths. Then after those five breaths, slight bend to the left knee, bring in the block about a foot in front of your left. So to straighten up through the left leg, flex with the right foot and press the right foot, the right heel into the wall, right shoulder to the wall. Good. And maybe you can take your eye gaze up, engage the core, engage the quads, five breaths. And then very gently bend at the left leg, keep the right foot active, and place it onto the ground at that warrior diagonal. Adjust your width. Bring the left block back in between your left foot and the wall. And with your right arm, you're going to pendulum swing it down to the front of the mat for the full extension slide angle pose. Five breaths. Bring in the back of your arm to touch the wall. It might feel better too for some of us if we bring the block forward in front of our foot. And for the fire breaths, very gently square, lift up the back heel. Good. And then this time, walk in our blocks to the center. Go ahead and bring your feet just a little more than hip length apart. Bend the knees outward, to point the toes out. Good. And come into a yogi squat malasana pose where your back is straight and it's pressing into the wall here. Palms are together, knees are pressing into the elbows at the same time the elbows are pressing outward towards the knees. Lifting up the chest. Five breaths. After the five breaths, since we're already kind of in that prep, if you wanted to add a a little challenge into your asana or into your um, sequence, I should say. We're going to come into crow pose. We're going to go ahead and hike the tailbone up and bring in your knees either to the outside of the triceps or on top of your, or on top of the triceps here. Good. And you can actually, as we bring the hips up and engage to the core, you can bring your feet onto the wall to help keep you balanced. Five breaths. Just don't press hard or else you topple forward. Now for the five breaths, you can release. Good. And then we're coming to the close to the end of class here. Good. And so the rest of the class, we're going to have our legs up on the wall, and we're going to have our shavasana there, too. Good. 
So with your blanket, go ahead and al align the short part onto the wall so that our spine can um, lie onto the blanket. Good. And grabbing a bolster or pillow nearby. Good. And from here, we're going to swing our legs up onto the wall and having our glutes connect to the wall as well. Good. And we're going to come into a butterfly pose, pressing the feet together, bringing our knees towards the wall. And if you wanted to add a little bit of a challenge, if you're able to, you could bring your blocks underneath your knees or your shins, and you can press your knees into the blocks to help keep it stable here. Five breaths. And then after the five breaths, if your blocks are on the wall, you can go ahead and remove it. Good. Start to bend at the knees. Create little windshield wipes here. And then walking your feet just a little higher up the wall, coming into a up the wall bridge pose. You can place your hands flat onto the ground, shoulders are onto the ground. And then we're going to inhale, lift up through the hips. So this is more like a supported shoulder stand at this point. Neither keep your hands onto the ground or maybe underneath your hip crease. Three more breaths. Press your left foot into the wall. Inhale, straighten your right toes towards the ceiling. And then inhale, start to guide the right foot towards the back of the room. Three breaths. Good. Replace the right foot onto the wall. Inhale, straighten the left toes to the ceiling. And then inhale, bring them towards the back of the room. Three breaths. Wonderful. Bring your left foot back to meet the right. Very gently guide the tailbone back to the ground. Concluding the end of class, we're going to have our Shavasana in inverted staff pose. And to help with some grounding, you can take the pillows or even balance out with blocks too. Placing them on top of your feet here. You sure they don't want to walk? Good. Into your staff pose, connecting your hips to the wall. If they aren't there, toes are flat. It's your choice to keep your arms, cactus arms, maybe a T, maybe even gently above your head. Whatever feels the best, you can go ahead and take the next few moments here in our makeshift Shavasana. Technically Shavasana is not a state, it's an actual pose and that's the corpse pose. So we'll say that our inverted step pose is just our completed pose, our resting pose tonight.
And then we, as we lie here in our Shavasana, I picked a quote that resonated with today's practice. And this quote is by Eckhart Tolle. That acceptance looks like a passive state, but in reality, it brings something entirely new into this world. That peace, a subtle energy, vibration, is consciousness. So as we have our legs up on the wall here, you go ahead and start to find some micro movements from your toes, maybe swaying your ankle side to side, your fingers and your wrists. Allowing the energy of today's practice guide you for peace and health for the rest of your night. Allow yourself to just gently bend at the knees. Inhale, bringing your arms above your head, taking a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And very gently start to guide your knees to the side, your upper body to the side. And then just slowly guide yourself into a comfortable seated position. Allowing your palms to meet the heart center. From here, you can go ahead and take a bow for yourself and for all of our climbing neighbors and friends that are sharing this special vibration with us tonight. And to extend that love and gratitude to each and every one of us for making it on today's map, on your map here tonight. And namaste. Thank you very much, everybody that attended the 7 p.m. class. And then if you came here from my previous class, thanks so much for doing it back to back. Um, your like that gratitude is more towards yourself for taking the time to take care of yourself. Um, throughout the month of May, we still will be um, doing these live streams and doing what we can to uh, bring some awesome video content to the YouTube page so that you can stay active until we find out when we reopen. And in case you weren't updated on um, anything that's going on into our gym, um, Craig uploaded a video here on this YouTube channel that can give you a little insight of what the month of makeup possibly look like it's so uncertain but what's certain is that we're just not open now for climbing um with that being said next tuesday on may 5th we are hosting another blood drive um for popular demand on those that are like oh i missed it and i want to donate blood uh from 9 a.m to 2 p.m at the milwaukee adventure rock location um that we, you know, will be holding um, a session where, you know, we can come in and donate your blood to help those during um, this strange time. So if you can make it, um, I will be helping out with it. So I would love to come and see all of you. I miss you so much. And if you do take my morning class at 7 a.m. on that day, it will end a little short. Um, I will only be doing a half hour session inside of Adventure Rock, um, still through the live feed, so that I can help um, set up and help with the blood drive. So I really hope that you come and see me and see all the volunteers and to, you know, support a great cause. We'll see you later. Have a good night.